Hi, my name is Amy. I'm the Head Mathematics Tutor for Pinnacle Coaching College. Today, I've got a challenging financial mathematics question for you. Let's get started. To begin, let's cover a couple of basic formulas you will need to address the question in this area. So firstly, the compound interest formula. How do you calculate compound interest? So it's basically this formula here. Okay, so A represents the amount um, at the end of a certain year or at the end of a number of periods. It includes basically principal and interest. So principal is P, so the amount you've invested or the amount you've borrowed. Uh, one plus the interest rate, so usually interest rate is a per annum rate. You might need to change it to a monthly rate if it's compounded monthly. And N is the number of uh, per time periods, which could be the number of years or number of months. Second thing is you also need the sum of a GP formula. So if you don't remember what that is, it's basically this formula here, which I'll explain the elements. So sum of GP formula. A is the first term in the sequence. R is a common ratio, so remember what a GP is. Uh, GP is, for example, something like 2, 4, um, 8, 16. So it's going up by some common ratio. So in the example I've given you, it's going up by a common ratio of 2. And that's what R is in the context of this formula. N is the number of terms you are trying to add. And finally, you also need to know how to solve an exponential equation using logarithms. So for example, if I give you 2 to the power of n is equal to uh, 5, okay? You need to be able to solve this using logarithms. So if you change that into a logarithm, making the indices the subject here, so it's log base 2, 5, and then generally you can use the change of base law to put into the calculator. Okay, so that's pretty much it. If you don't know how to use logarithms yet, that's fine. Guess and check, yeah? Just sub in different powers until you get to roughly about five. That's another alternative method. All right, so now that you've seen the key formulas applicable to this area, let's take a look at a very challenging HSC question on financial maths. So the one I'm gonna show you today is the 2011 uh, question 8C. So this one is challenging as you will see later is because there are some non-standard facts that affect your compounding and the different streams and we'll take a look at how to deal with those situations. But to start, let's have a look at the facts. We've got Jules who is going to be paying $100 at the beginning of each month into our superannuation funds, it's very standard so far. It's going to be compounded monthly, 6% per annum for 35 years. All right, so just noting down the key information here. So we've got $100 um, beginning of the month. Very important to note that so you know how long your payments are going to be compounding for. You've got a 6% per annum rate, but compounded monthly. So immediately, I'll take that and change it to a monthly rate. So 6% divided by 12, or in other words, 0 0.06 divided by 12 will be uh, 0 0.005. So that's the monthly rate we're going to use, okay? So per month. All right, and finally, the number of years is 35 years. I mean, the question is pretty nice. They've already told you how many months that is. So 35 years which is equivalent to 420 months. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now, the objective here is to find the final value at the end of the 420 months, two marks. So not a lot of marks here, but a very standard question. So let's take a look at how we calculate that. Okay, so what I've got here is a little more timeline to help us understand how the different streams of payment are uh, streams of payments are going to be compounded. 
So this is a little tool I often teach my students to help them analyze more complex situations, uh, especially if there are a change in terms of the compounding, as we'll see later on in the second part of this question. But I want to show you how this tool actually applies to a very basic component so you can see how it operates. Let's take a look. So from before when we read the question, we said, okay, there's going to be $100 contributed at the beginning of each month. Now how you read this number line is, this is the first month, second month, okay? So zero would be the beginning of the first month, one would be the end of the first month or the beginning of the second month, okay? So starting with the first payment, so the first $100, it's going to be compounded for a full 420 months. We are trying to find the final value at this particular point. Okay, so in other words, let's call that A1. So A1 would be 100 times 1 plus R. So we're using the monthly rate. So 0 0.005 uh, to the power of uh, 420. Okay. So let's do another payment. So the payment made at the beginning of the second month will be, you can see it's only compounded for 419 months. So let's take a look. So we've got 100, so 1 plus R to the power of 419. Okay, so you sort of start to see, um, get the gist of it. I'll do another one. So the one made at the beginning of the third month, so that's the beginning of the third month, gets compounded for 418 months. Okay, now the last payment, so it just continues, continues, keep going, okay? Um, the last month for the 420th month, this point is the beginning of the 420th month, so um, it gets one month of compounding. So in other words, A420 is equal to 100 times 1 plus 0 0.005. That's it, okay? One month of compounding. All right, so now that we've seen how each of the streams of payments are compounded, let's take a look at building the formula for calculating that final value. So the typical working or layout for financial math questions should look something like this. Diagram, not necessary, uh, only if you find that it's going to help you analyze the problem. So I've done this one just to show you how the different streams actually gets compounded. But this is the bare minimum you should be writing as a part of your response. I do not actually like seeing responses where they just jump to the final formula because um, it doesn't really show that understanding and quite often these are two markers, three markers, you need to show a little bit more. Alright, so what you need to do is show the building process. So A1 is basically that one over here, okay? Uh, to the power of 420, then 419, 418, dot, 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 down to the last payment, down to 1.005, okay? So the total value is just little add, adding all these streams of compounded payments. So A1 added to A420. So I already done the work here. So you just copy all those things down here. Okay, you get this. Then take out $100. So you can see the sequence more clearly. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reverse the order of the sequences. So we're going to start with 1.005. So the term before that would have been 1.005 squared until 419, 420. So 1.005, 420. Okay. So the reason why I've rearranged it so you can see more clearly how to apply the GP sum formula. So the GP sum formula. If you remember, it's Sn is equal to A, Rn minus 1 on R minus 1. 
So A is the first term. So A is this term here, so 1.005. Common ratio is the number you multiply to get to the next one, so 1.005. And there are 420 terms in this sequence. Okay, so I'm going to sub those values into this formula to do the sum. So now all you have to do is put this into the calculator. Just be careful, double check your input. I've seen a lot of common mistakes in the area where you just miss a zero or get the decimal wrong and it can really screw with your answer. All right, so um, you put that into the calculator, you should get 1.0005. I mean the answer is in the question so you should know that you've got it correct and that's it that's the first part done now that we've done the first part let's take a look at the second part which is a little bit more challenging so let's see the facts here so she has read a magazine 15 years later and realized that she needs a hundred thousand in her fund to retire so at the time of reading she only had that much in her fund so let's note that down so currently in the fund we've got twenty nine thousand two hundred and twenty seven dollars for the remaining 20 years she intends to work so in other words we have 20 years to go so 20 years which I think the question sort of tells you it's equivalent to 240 months. We are going to work out what's the amount she has to contribute to achieve her goal of 800,000. So M, uh, monthly uh, contributions. And we've got 6% perennium again okay so six percent per annual we already worked out that's equivalent to 0 0.005 per month and what else do we need we've got 20 years that's pretty much it okay so let's use those facts to show the first part so a2 being the end of two months starting from when the new contribution is happening let's take a look at that so let's take a look at how to answer the first part. So I've drawn a section of the timeline here, which is basically the first two months to help us understand the compounding relating to each of the streams. So firstly, what we have is the amount that's already in the fund. So the $29,227, that continues to make interest. So let's start with that amount. So 29,227, okay, so if we're only looking at the first two months, it gets compounded for two months. So in other words, by the end of two months, it's worth 29227 times 1.005 squared, so the compounding. Then your new contribution also kicks in. So new contribution amount is the M value. So it's done at the beginning of the month. So concurrently, I've got a new contribution happening at this point which is going to be compounded for also two months. Then at the beginning of the second month, we've got another contribution going into the fund, which gets compounded for one month. And that's basically it. So A2 is about adding the three streams together. And then factorizing the M. And that's it, that's the first part done. All right, so we've done the first part, an easy one marker, very simple there. 
So now we're gonna take that and apply that to the second part. So we are looking for the value of M and we have a goal that we are trying to reach. We're trying to reach a goal of $800,000 in the space of the 240 months. So let's put that in. So goal, 800,000. All right, so let's see what is the new contribution value that will get us there. All right, so I've already gone ahead and done some basic calculations. I've extended the timeline to the full 240 months. So the amount that's in the account already is now being compounded for the 240 months. Then your first contribution also compounded for 240 months. Second contribution, 239 months, so on and so forth, down to the very, very last payment, the 240th payment, gets one month of compounding. So adding all of these streams together, so first one, yeah, add, 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 so add all of that together, factorize the M out of your payment, so take out the M, you get that. And all I've done here is I've switched the order of the sequence, so it starts at 1.005 and the one before that would be 1.005 square ending at 1.005 to the power of 240. So your first term here is 1.005, common ratio is 1.005, there are 240 terms in total in this sequence. So using the GP sum formula, let's simplify this. So that's pretty much it. That's the amount at A240. So what do we do with that next? To find M, we need to equate that with our goal of $800,000. Let's see how we do that. So finally, we are going to calculate the M value by equating that to our goal value of $800,000. So all I've done is taken the formula we've deduced down here from before and we are equating that to 800,000. Our objective here is to make M the subject. So let's do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this number into the calculator because it's a complicated expression. So evaluating the calculator first makes things a little bit easier for you to do. So it becomes about 464.35 M is equals to 800,000 minus that. Put that into the calculator also. Okay, so it becomes something like that. Divide that across. which should get you a value of 1514.48 and that is it now I've kept the I mean I've rounded it off in my working but I actually kept the exact answers in my calculator so there shouldn't be any rounding error in your final answer but if you're not comfortable with the memory function in your calculator just do a couple more decimal points so there are no rounding errors at all in your calculations so that is it, we've answered the question. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for any future updates. If you want to watch some other videos on other topics, I will leave the link up here and down here. So make sure you click on them to watch some other videos as well. Thank you for watching.